Hello everyone, it's Wanik Zombie. Welcome to Along the Edge. Long story short, this is a visual novel, so it's pretty much just going to be me reading. Um, and the fun thing about this game is that your actions affect not only what happens in the story, but also how our character appears. Uh, so as far as I know with the story, you inherit an old... Uh, property from your family and there's witchcraft involved and if you want to go down that path or if you want to stick with your old life or you balance along the edge as the title suggests <laughs> but thing that interests me most was that there are uh, apparently 60 different endings according to the developers depending on our decisions now I don't know how long I will have this going if we would try to get all 60 endings but uh and i don't know how long each run through takes but uh depending on how it goes i'll probably do maybe one or two endings but i'm definitely going to do this as naturally as possible um just so that it is a blind playthrough and it's it's pretty much so it's honest Okay, so let us begin. Okay. Along the Edge is an interactive graphic novel. During your adventure, you'll be asked to make choices that will define how your story progresses. Some of these choices will have direct consequences, forking the story in one direction instead of another. However, each of your decisions, even the most Anecdotic will have an impact on the personality of the main character, Daphne. Well, that's a pretty name. Progress automatically saved. And access to the menu, okay. Ooh. Glow, the sun, the moon, and the star. One of your decisions influenced Daphne's personality. One or two symbols light up on the top of the screen. Okay. And along the edge, your decisions are neither good nor bad. Oh good, so there's no alignment system. <laughs> the branching of the story opens different narrative hypotheses, shaping your adventure according to your choices. Choose wisely. Or in my case, choose naturally. Dr. Durant. So is it settled? Yes. I guess I need this fresh start. This inheritance... It's exactly what I needed to finally turn the page. I know you've convinced yourself of this, but are you sure of what you really wish to achieve by relocating? After all, you recently went through a major trauma, and there's still a lot of ground to cover. Between you and I, you know what I think of your decision, but I can't prevent you from leaving. Did you already find a job there? Yes, I did. I'm substitute teaching for a math teacher at the village's middle school. Uh, pregnancy leave. Six months. It should give me enough time to get my bearings. Don't you mind giving up your PhD? Your research career is quite promising. Mm. Doesn't sound like I have no choice. I want to go with I don't know. I don't know. If it really was a mistake, I could still come back here. It costs nothing to give it a shot. I see. One last thing. I know your relationship with Frank is quite tense. It is. We broke up recently, you know. And I used to count on his support. After so many years together, I need time. I guess you're fully aware that you're about to break your ties with him. Are you sure you won't regret it later? Did you at least inform him of your plans? Mm. I'm going to
to say it's not that easy. It's kind of whenever you have um, a very tense relationship with someone, especially if you're breaking off a friendship or in her case, breaking off a relationship. Um, yeah, you're not you're not as inclined to be as open to people that much. So go. Oh, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. I don't know how to tell him I'm leaving. You should at least give him a phone call. Despite what happened between him and you. He has a right to know you're leaving the area. I don't... I wouldn't say someone has a right to know. Listen, Daphne. You have my number. Please don't be afraid to call me if you need anything. I'm counting on you. Okay, I will. And all I can do is wish you all the best. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. Chapter 1 August I'm leaving tomorrow. I've inherited the family house, my grandmother's. I haven't known her, and now I never will. My mother had burned the bridges with the side of the family, the only side, by the way, since I've never known who my father was. I remember the birthday cards, though. My mother had hidden them between two piles of laundry in the linen closet. If the link had been broken, it wasn't my grandmother's fault. And here I stand, ten years later, inheriting this big house three hundred miles away, having myself cut off all contact with my mother. That's what they call karma, isn't it? The other PhD students asked me to meet them at the bar. I could also go see Frank to say goodbye. And of course, I can also just go home. What should I do? Go to Frank's flag, go to the bar, go home. You know, this is a lot at once. I'm I'm just gonna go home. Music's very pretty. That's it. Everything I own is packed in a couple of boxes. Music's also pretty loud. <laughs> I like to be sad to leave, but I really don't mind. My last night here, I don't know what I'm hoping to find there. Okay, so there's no way to adjust the music. So if you guys are having a hard time hearing my voice as I'm speaking, I apologize. The only thing I can change is if the sound is on or off. And I definitely want the music to be playing. fresh start? I'm trying to convince myself of that. Maybe Dr. Durant is right. Maybe all of this is nothing but evading the issue. Did my mother feel the same when she left my grandmother's village 30 years ago? Am I walking in her footsteps after all? The difference is, the, is that she had me. I'm leaving alone. I'm asking myself too many questions. I've taken my decision. I can't afford to go back. I can't undo what I've done. I'll try to get some sleep. 300 miles. Got up way too early. The trip is going to be long. Little by little, civilization slowly gives way to empty spaces. The highway is replaced by an interlacing of, of small roads, and the clear directions given on the major routes turn into a tracking game that's getting increasingly trickier as I get closer to my destination. The road goes through the village, which I cross quickly. Although I thought I was getting away from the agitation of the city, all this peace and serenity seems to hide something nefarious. Almost ominous. After a couple of miles, I turn into a diff dirt track, overrun with weeds. I go through the gates marking the limits of the family domain. Then, on the right, I see a small stone house. That must be the outbuilding where the couple wardens live. It was specified in, specified in the act of secession the notary made me sign. 
I decide to leave the car there. I don't feel like driving all the way back in reverse if the track turns out to be a dead end. Walking a bit further, I see a man coming toward me. He's carrying a rifle and a dead rabbit by the ears. Mr. Bertie. Hello, miss. You're on private property. Did you take a wrong turn? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to apologize. I'm sorry. I, I must be lost. I'll, I'll turn around. Wait. Are you Miss Delator, by any chance? I am indeed. How did you guess? You're the spitting image of your grandmother. Well, when she was young, I mean. I'm Gerard Bertain, a warden. Nobody told me you were coming. Is... is the house open? No. Well, yes. It's been a couple of months now since Miss Delatoire passed away. So with my wife, Gilbert... Well... Is that Gilbert or Gilbertine? Gilbert... Gilbert... I am not sure, honestly. Apologies if I'm butchering that name. Gilbert... I'm going to say Gilberte. Gilberte? We've made sure everything was weatherproofed, but the door is locked. Really? Well, the only path goes by our house, and there's not a lot of visitors anyway. They'll just usually avoid coming up here, you know. I'm gonna ask why. Why are they avoiding the house? People get worked up for nothing around here. An old lady living alone in a big house and who doesn't go out much, that's enough to make them talk. Thank you, sir. I'll be in the house if you're looking for me. I'll send you my wife, Gilberte. She'll help you open the shutters. Keep going along the path. It's not very far and you can't get lost. Pretty sure I'm mispronouncing her name. Give me a moment and I will look up this up. Okay, so I'm back. So, um, I looked it up. The name is French. And it's pronounced in the original French uh, dialect as Gilbert. Um, and, but in the common English, um, or say modern English pronunciation, it could be announced as Gilberta. Um, I prefer Gilbert, uh, just sounds or like flows better as opposed to, um, Gilberta. Um, but I'll go, I'll go with Gilbert. Okay. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Perting. Have a nice day. About 500 feet further, the path in the woods opens on a kind meadow where the house was built. Although several generations of Delatois lived here, I discovered this legacy for the first time. The building is impressive, with this tower in the middle of the, fa of the facade the last remain of an older version of the castle, and certainly at the origin of my family name. As promised, the door isn't locked, and it opens on an entrance hall plunged in darkness. As I cross the threshold, I'm seized by the coolness of the old stones, breaking with the searing heat of the midday sun shining over the garden. I can't see much of the room, but its size promises to be intimidating. That might be a nice change from the tiny city flats I used to live in. I'm desperately trying to open one of the windows to let, in the, to let the light in when I'm surprised by a voice coming from the entrance. Mrs. Bertie. Miss? An old woman is standing at the threshold. Yes? My husband told me you were coming to the house. Are you planning to stay for the night? Much more than the night, I'm moving in. 
Oh, and call me Daphne, please. I'll get my share of Miss and Madam when I start working at the school. Are you aware of the inheritance? So you're Madam's granddaughter, then. I used to talk about you a lot, you know. I remember you. Well, I mean, it was a long time ago. You were still a baby when Miss Sophie left. Madam never got over it. Well, I'm sure you have a lot to tell me. But can't you do it while helping me with open the shutters? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. So, you're moving into the castle. You're going to work at the village's middle school, aren't you? Yes, I'm a math teacher. I'm going to teach there. Well, at least for the next six months, as a substitute. So tell me, how do you want to proceed? I mean, I know you've been working for my grandmother, but I'm not sure I can afford your services, if you see what I mean. The inheritance left me barely enough to cover the costs of the house for a couple of years. Oh, don't worry. Gerald and I, we've retired two years ago. But Madame didn't forget us in the legacy. She was kind enough to let us live in the out in the outbuilding for the rest of our days. We'll help for as long as we can, my husband and I. We've done this all our life. Work doesn't scare us. And anyway, it wouldn't be boring to have nothing to do all day. Let's see. I, f I feel bad having, um, like, because, like, that was my grandmother that was like, you can work for me for free, but me personally, I would feel bad not giving someone something for doing stuff for me. But, but I can't ask you to work for free. It's not really a job, just a way to keep busy, and it's offered with pleasure, miss. Would you like me to get you some groceries from the market tomorrow? I used to do it for Madam. Since Miss Sophie left, she didn't go out much. No, don't worry. I'll go. It will give me an opportunity to check the village out. Mrs. Bertine helps me make my bed. The windows, now wide open, let the stuffy smells out while ushering in the golden light of the sun, setting on this nice summer evening. And she leaves me alone for my first night in a new home. I spend it watching the antique television in the kitchen while eating. For dinner, the leftovers of a sandwich I bought earlier on the highway. I try to get some sleep, far from the reassuring sounds of cars and the lights of the city, with this forest silence only interrupted by some disturbing squeaking of the floorboards and the hooting of a hunting night owl. It's not surprising I got up in quite a bad mood, and in the sight of the empty fridge hadn't pushed me to act, I would certainly have succumbed to the inviting comfort of the sofa and wasted my day napping in the living room. The market it wasn't exactly what I imagined. We all have this romantic notion of the picturesque little country town market, but this one was nothing but purely functional. Nothing romantic in the butcher's stall, nor in the fishmonger's radio, turning way too loud on a market station that seems to broadcast, at this hour of the day, playlists of songs that used to be popular, but are utterly old-fashioned nowadays. I'm buying some bread when someone boldly cuts me in the line. Stan... Stanislas Melter. Give me three baguettes and two nut breads. Slice, please. I'm sorry, but I believe it was my turn. It'll only take an instant, don't worry. I'm gonna keep calm. I don't care if it takes an instant or ten minutes. If you... You're not from around here, are you? What does it have to do with anything? 
Listen, miss, please inform yourself before you start making a scene. It's a little bit embarrassing. See, I'm done already. It didn't take that long, did it? Have a nice day. The man put some change in the baker's hand before disappearing in the street. Seriously, who's this guy? You're not from around here, are you? It's Malter's son. His family owns a sawmill that employs half the town. As for the other half, they're all in business with them, one way or another. Does it give him the right to behave like this? You shouldn't cross the Malter's, you know. They've been in town for generations, and people say all sorts of things about them. What kind of things? Strange accidents. Business suddenly going bankrupt. People are quite superstitious here. Hmm. Considering I'm new, I'm going to tread softly. Um, but it's... It does make sense. I'm gonna go with really, because that's kind of confusing. Well, if it's the countryside. A lot of people here still believe in this kind of stuff, I guess. People are free to think what they like. I'm leaving the area soon, so you'll understand I don't want to drag myself into this. The others told me to be careful with this family, and I don't want any trouble. I see. There are a lot of characters, so my voice will definitely fluctuate between them. Um... But I'll try to keep Daphne's voice the same as much as I could. I realize I've already been here a couple of days. I hadn't taken time to visit the house properly. With my tight schedule, I stayed in the main rooms, going from the bedroom to the kitchen, through the living room. It's high time I take advantage of the weekend to give myself the grand tour. Maybe I'll learn a thing or two about my grandmother and this family I know nothing about. I could also ask a couple of questions to Miss Bertine. Until now, she has remained very evasive. If I go see her outside her work hours, she might be more inclined to answer me. She's a very discreet woman, and somehow always manages to not be in the same room as me. If I leave the kitchen for a while, to take a shower for example, when I come back I always find out that the leftovers of my breakfast have been put away and the table has been cleaned up and the dishwasher is gently humming. I've told her several times not to make my bed, that I'm perfectly capable of doing myself. She seems to acknowledge, but keeps making it the next morning anyway. So I guess she might enjoy a friendly visit. Where should I start? You know what? I'm going to check out my mom's old bedroom. To this day, when I when I visit my parents and I look in my parents' bedroom, it's like full of nostalgia. This is it's not too often you get to you know go around your parents' bedroom. It wasn't off limits or anything. Just you wouldn't have a reason unless you wanted to ask your parents for something. My grandmother used to live alone in this big house. She kept most of the rooms closed to stay in the ground floor on the left side of the building. I haven't taken over her quarters and, with the nights getting colder, I'm happy I don't have to keep the whole house warm. I check the other rooms, the parlors on the ground floor and the multiple bedrooms above. Everything seems frozen in time, the furniture covered with the white linen sheets, maybe waiting for better days to return, like when Adelaide wasn't a widow yet and my mother was still living under her roof. Her old bedroom hasn't changed since her teen years, even if I can tell that someone has hurriedly made room for me, this baby who was about to be born. There are still some band posters from another age pinned to the walls, and a crib where I might have spent my first few nights before my mother decided to leave. But there wasn't any white linen sheet to protect the furniture in this room, and it looks like it has been cleaned very recently. 
What should I do next? Tower. Go to check the tower. I've never been up in a tower. I didn't find the entrance of the tower. I searched inside and outside the house, but no door seems to lead to into it. After randomly exploring the corridors of the rooms, I had to admit defeat. I have to ask Miss Burton about this mystery. However, while I was searching for this entrance, my feet took me to the basement where I discovered a treasure of old wines. The most recent bottles were around 30 years old. I guess my grandmother wasn't much of a drinker, and the wine cellar must have remained untouched since her husband passed away. Did my mother come here during her teen years, defying her parents' rules, and steal a bottle to share with her friends from the village? Was I conceived during one of these parties, celebrated by sacrificing these rare vintages on the altar of youth, with my mother Sophie not being sober enough to resist the charms of a young local farmer. When I was old enough to ask, she always answered with a hand gesture that my father was from the village and hadn't wanted to recognize this child he didn't ask for. All in all, she said, we were better off without him. Maybe I could bring a bottle to Mrs. Burton. Hmm. I'm going to leave a bottle. I'm going to just leave it there. No, it's a bad idea. And getting drunk like that in the middle of the day is not like me at all. To next. Now to talk to Mrs. Bertine, if we can find her. There she is. Good morning, Mrs. Bertine. How are you doing? Oh, hi, Miss Daphne. My joints are aching today. Must be the weather getting colder. Summer always goes so fast. It's almost fall already. Can you believe it? But enough talking about me. I'm sure you hadn't come around to hear the old maid complain about her rheumatism. How can I help you, miss? That's the room, the tower. Hmm, so I know we need to ask about the tower, and I am curious about that. Uh, I don't think she will know much about my mom's bedroom because it was pretty much left as it was kind of like when a child goes missing a lot of parents leave the rooms as they are um, so you know what I'm curious about what it was like for my grandmother tell me how it was like in the old days I mean before mom left when your mother left, we were already at the end of the rope, if you allow me, miss. There were only four. There were only your grandmother, Madame Adelaide, and Miss Sophie living here. Her grandfather died when your mother was still a little girl. An illness that took him without warning. The doctors didn't know what to do for this poor man. But when I had arrived, it was something else. There were lots of people living in the castle. The cousins, the uncles, the aunts, and the swarm of children. What happened? I don't know, really. There were some unexplained deaths, accidents. Some of them left the area, got out of touch. It all started when the Maltiers brought the sawmill. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to assume anything or a accuse anybody I'm just gonna be curious what's the connection do you really think there might be a link I mean there's no logical connection between buying a sawmill and these accidents I can't tell miss all I can see is that when the Maltiers flourish the Deltoise wither I met Maltier's son at the bakery this hooligan? I know it's none of my business. You should be wary of him. He's a good-for-nothing who spends his time doing who knows what hanging around in his car. <laughs> well, I can believe her, 
but I'm uh, considering I don't know the guy. Um, I want to I want to say don't. I'm not gonna judge him. I'm sure he's not that bad. With the family he's dealing with, it mustn't been easy. Well, since you're asking about the past, would you like to see the old picture albums? Sure. Tell me where I can find them. I'd love to take a look. Thanks. Cupboard in the living room. There are even some pictures taken by your great-grandfather. You'll see. Something else? And now I'm going to ask about the tower. I couldn't find the entrance of the tower. Do you know how to get inside? Well, I can't say, miss. No, I couldn't tell you how to get in if my life depended on it. Madam, your grandmother used to say it has been walled up and would rather not know what was inside. Do you mean that no one could get inside the tower since, what, 30 years ago? 40 years ago? Whoa, way more than that. I'm 67. She looks good for 67. I'm 67. I've been living here since I was 14, and I always knew the tower was like this. So no one knows what's inside, right? You must have your own idea, don't you? You must have heard something in the village, right? Well, that's just gossip. Nothing worth talking about. What are you talking about? Please don't insist, miss. With all due respect, I can't resolve myself to defile your late grandmother's name. Something else? Okay, well, since the option is still there, I'm going to ask about my mom's bedroom. I visited the house, gone into every room, and I noticed all the furniture was covered with white linen sheets. Yes, it's Madam, your grandmother, who, who's asked me to close most of the rooms. She lived alone in the house, and she never had any visitor. It was to prevent the furniture from being damaged. Why are you asking? Do you want me to open up the rest of the house? No, that's not why I was asking. One of the rooms. I guess it's my mother's old bedroom. Why wasn't it closed, as you say? Because Madam asked me to keep it freshly cleaned. You know, when Miss Sophie left, it broke her heart. She wasn't the same afterwards. Right until she died, she never gave up hope your mother would come back. She asked me to make her room every day, just in case, she used to say. Oh, that's sweet. Something else? Okay, that's it. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. I'll come back later. What should I do next? Okay, so... We are, well, we're going to look at the photo album since we already spoke to Mrs. Bertine. But that is the first episode. I'm really liking this. It looks like this is going to be a, a longer series. But in the same, at the same time, considering what uh, we experienced early on with um, talking to Frank, talking to the ex, going to the bar with the friends, um, it looks like there can be more. And if I do decide to go through and have different endings, um, I will label it accordingly. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. How about that? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, how long this series goes. Um, how many endings I do. So on and so forth. This one I'm playing as naturally as possible. Um, but again, if I do decide to go through this ending and then come back to this game, uh, I want to know who Frank is and I want to know early on, like interact with him instead of just outright leaving like we did at the beginning, but we'll see, but let's focus here and now where we are and I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.